Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good tune. You want me to fix my audio real quick? Oh, dude, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Hanging in there. It's been a it's been a long week, but I am pumped for this episode. I I have been waiting all week for this. This is exciting. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoy doing this. Um, working all week um, to get to to get to Friday, and you know, it, we got some uh, rescheduling done, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're here. Yeah. Oh man, it's been a hectic week. To uh, say the least, on my end as well too. Mm. I'm happy. I, I'm happy that we made this happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's funny how schedules and things can um, definitely change. But the one thing I, I I do enjoy is that through it all, there is at least a little bit of consistency, which is great for content creators such as well, I, I'll call ourselves content creators. Uh, <laughs> content creators such for ourselves and and for other people. You know, it's just something that they can look forward to, um, at least. For a little bit of the week, like you were talking about last week with the food and the cooking. Um, you know, it's just something, at least one day a week they can look forward to. We're going to tune in, have some fun, get some conversations in with that. So, um, uh, yeah, like like we said in the intro, uh, this is about social media. Um, you know, kind of our experiences with it. Um, you know, we live in an age where social media is the, um, it's the new frontier. Uh, this is This is where the future is. And... Many people may not like it, but it's it's what it is. Um, social media growth is on the rise, fast, rapidly. There are new platforms coming out every month. Um, while they may not be as popular as, popular as the big four, um, which would be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, I would call those the big four. Um, TikTok has surpassed a lot of what people's thoughts are on that. Um, especially with the pandemic and it is a big marketing tool too as well uh, with what we were just talking about with social media um, I don't know how long have you been on social media oh man um, I know I definitely lied about my age uh, to get on myspace <laughs> uh, that will give you that um, I was there when there was my yearbook. I don't know if anyone remembers that social media platform. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, man. That one was rough. Uh, <laughs> I got to look this see. up. It's called the yearbook? Or my book? yearbook. Yeah, it was a social media platform. You know, golly, I must have been in middle school or something. That was a social media platform where people can message each other and deck out their own Facebook or like their own pages in whatever way. Oh, and it's wow. like, oh, that's your yearbook page. And everybody's like, yeah, I know. It was the same concept as MySpace, but I don't believe you could do a profile song. And that was like so primo about MySpace. It was like, dude, what's your profile song? I I was never around with MySpace. I, I never um, got in that quickly. Um, but yeah, my yearbook looks a lot like Facebook. At oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think my and I think MySpace did too. I will have to look at some photos because I don't remember MySpace. 
But um, I remember seeing something about – I guess Facebook really kind of got its start off of like MySpace, and, and I don't know when your book came around. But um, I definitely know that um, Facebook got its beginnings when MySpace was really like the biggest thing ever. Um, and I want to say – I think it was like 2008, I think, my parents first got a Facebook. And um, I think my sisters were on it more time more than my mom was, <laughs> I think. Um, but I came around and I think I was around in like 2013. I was a late bloomer to social media. Um, and you said your, your said MySpace was the first one. I, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was the first major one. Um, what it was like when MySpace really came around and you got into it, what would you say was the three best things that came from MySpace? My, uh, MySpace? Yeah. Dude, the profile song. Top, <laughs> top, top number one. Top that was cool. Um, that, um, uh, you being able to learn coding. That was also super cool oh. as well, too, to design your page to have a certain look or it's just like, I want a certain color, so I'm going to type in this hex code. And oh. it's like, yeah, like, you know, actual uh, web design, that was actually uh, really cool. And especially, like, being super young, and it's just, like, you get to experiment with that platform. You don't necessarily get to do that too much anymore on these uh, social media pages. Everything's already kind of laid out. And then, let's see, the last one. I just liked hanging out with my friends, you know? Um, they had fank accounts, obviously, you know, like how I knew, like, I made this a big deal, you know, back in middle school, but I befriended the Pope. <laughs> and people are like, that's not the real Pope. I'm like, but it is this MySpace. And he said yes. <laughs> so I guess we're homies, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, um, I was on MySpace, you know, during that time. Then I was also... Uh, on Facebook when it was become a fan before the like button. Hmm. Interesting. Y'all know become a fan? Oh my god. I know, I do. Uh, let's see. Let, let's see. Become. This whole old, I would say, I'm going to call it old. This old social media stuff is very interesting to me. Oh my gosh. Become a fan. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was before the like button. Ah, I see. Uh, yeah. yeah the, the first one that comes up is become a fan how how become a fan turned into the like that mm -hmm. that's the first one that's the first thing that pops up that's hilarious yeah yeah there's there's a few um i would say there's a few minor social media platforms um that are really interesting to dive in and 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 see there's uh one that's called uh meet me and it sort of works a lot like Facebook. You can send people friend requests. You can message them. Um, you can also go live um, as well. Um, but the thing that differenti differentiates Meet Me from Facebook is Meet Me, you can see anybody's live stream. If they're within your area or if you're one of the more popular ones, you can see their live stream. Um, but it's a bit buggy because there are so many bots on that, on that platform. I mean – the bots outweigh the number of humans easily. Um, so that's why I've since deleted the account. Um, and there's, I think, I don't know how many, I, I want to see, I know I have this written down somewhere. I think I had, yep, here it is. I had four, co total combined, I had four Instagram and Snapchat accounts before my current ones. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I kept on like deleting it because I go to like it or I would lose the password or forget my email i'd have to make a new one um but since with instagram being joined in with facebook it makes logging in a lot easier um but i have three accounts now that i maintain um on instagram i got my personal one my branding and then i've got like a spam one that i just use for photos and random live streams um but i would say instagram was it instagram was my first social media and i remember when i got it um I lived in a a semi semi strict um, uh, semi strict um, household. Um, my for I guess for the probably the first year and a half, maybe two, my parents were checking my post and my feed, and making sure I wasn't like doing anything stupid. Thank goodness for that. I uh, learned a lot of lessons from that. Um, 
but I, I think Snapchat was probably the first private one that I really had. No one really knew about that for a while. Um, and then I got my Facebook account actually. I actually put this. This this is how it's, this is how actually kind of funny this Facebook came about. I put that on my birthday list when it, for my seventeenth birthday. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, I want a Facebook account because I knew I couldn't get a Facebook account without my parents not- noticing. Because they'd be like, Oh, Josh friended me on Facebook. What? He has a Facebook? I didn't know that. You have a Facebook? Why didn't you tell us? So that's something that I couldn't hide. Oh um, my gosh! But yeah, that was. There was a lot of memories on those platforms um, that that are good looks backs, um, and I think with with, Inth- with Instagram as far as branding goes, uh, really creative now with reels, and I've been having a lot of fun creating those. Um, there's only a few up on the brand account, but um, yeah, w- with reels, I think that's like Instagram's version of TikTok, which is great because I'm not downloading it, <laughs> at least not on my phone. Um, and uh, I, I see a lot of similarities. Um, with Instagram, you know how you can put music and in Instagram stories? Um, Snapchat now has that now. Oh, well, that's s- cool. Snapchat had the stories first, and the Instagram and Facebook stole that. Yeah, they <laughs> zucked it. They z- <laughs> you never heard that? I know I have. It's just been a while. Zuck I forgot it. about it. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing for... A long time. <laughs> it's still happening. It's still happening, but I, I feel that people use it less than us just because of like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. He's. I think Mark Zuckerberg's become like a meme now. It's like, it's this got Zuck thing, but I I, fe- I think his face has become more of a meme because I I remember when he was in Congress testifying, um, <laughs> people were just. It was great. It was that was, comedic value one hundred and one. I mean. I'm sorry to say this, but you got a bunch of old farts asking a social media creator about social media. It's not gonna go over well. <laughs> it was they. One of the questions was, "Is it like a book with faces?" I think that was one of the memes, and it was like, "Oh dear God!" <laughs> like, "Mom, Dad, what are you doing?" No. Oh, that's bad. It's yeah. It, it got it got bad pretty quick, but um. At any point with social media, I think I think we all have felt this, but you ever gotten to a point where it's just like, okay, this is way too much. Every ah, day. Every day. Yeah. Every you day. Just, you just go, I need a break. I'm going to step away. And then you never return. And then you're like, oh, wow, I miss posting on this. And then you get into a groove and then you have to just go away. Because it's – social media is – man – it's a blessing, but it's also a curse if you don't use it wisely. Um, I don't know. It's, there's so much information on social media nowadays where it's it's easy to get bogged down and you just sit there and scroll. Um, but really, the cr- the great thing about social media is the creativity, the freedom of creativity, and um, I think that what that's what's so powerful, especially with the marketing stuff. Um, yeah, it's just kind of easy to keep track of people um but you also have to be very very careful because people can be really fake on social media with um it's like the iceberg you know you have the tip of the iceberg that shows people's highlights and everything they enjoy their hobbies and passions and then you go underneath and it's like it's not that all that great and i think that's something that um should be exposed more but also on a on a on a user basis, um, we should definitely be encouraging people to be completely real on social media. But it's so much fun. It's so much it, fun. It's a, it's always like a fine line. Yeah. You know, um, it's really hard to say how you should and you shouldn't act. Um, you know, um, it's it's a very fine line, and I think it's always going to stay a really great area. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard, you know, if you want to cover your tracks, just be smart enough to know how to do that. But, um, but if you're just posting, just posting, you know, it can be annoying. Um, it's always on the user. That's, that's the biggest thing. And a lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot of people don't know that. I think they do, but it's like one of those things that you forget after a while. 
that it's like, oh yeah, this is actually on me. Yeah, the um, the self reflection part. I, I see a lot of people. I think it's, I think social media has helped in this way of um, getting awareness out about certain things. Um, oh, definitely. Uh, we get. I mean, we both been there with work. You put in so many hours, and at the end of the week, you're just done. You're, you're exhausted. You're. You don't want to think anymore. All you want to do is just lie and be still. And I think with social media, there's a lot of awareness around that where it's. You know, the whole self-care thing is coming to mind where you, you do sometimes need to take a break, and it's good for you. It's it's not that you're lazy, and it's not that you don't want to work. It's that you've worked so much that you need to focus a little bit more on yourself um, than you have been. And social media has been a powerful tool in that, just a powerful tool. And by golly, I think a lot of people have really benefited from that. Where I think... Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people could benefit from that as well, too. Um, I think the biggest thing um, that is actually not happening is people teaching about media in general. Um, like, for me, like, I have a bachelor's in digital filmmaking and video production. And the biggest thing, you know, that, like, just learning how things get distributed and why... Um, your your average consumer is just not going to know that they're just going to passively view it yeah. and and it's just like my job to is to get your attention while you passively view it and you know you can't necessarily do that because that actually hurts you you know because it's just like everything that we're actually doing right here right now in this moment is actually building to whatever or wherever we're trying to go and if you're just passively going through it, it can be very damaging. Hmm. And especially, and, and it can get you in this like crazy existential crisis as well too, which, you know, is very terrible. And I really don't wish that for anybody, yeah. you know, because it's just like you can find yourself scrolling for hours. It's just like that movie um, on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. I, I, it's called The Social Dilemma. Yep, I don't know seen if it. You, seen it. Yeah, you've seen it? Yep, yeah. I have. You know, where we have... I'm going to say some spoilers, so if you guys haven't seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix, I do kind of recommend it, but if you're not into that kind of thing, it's all right. But we got this kid, right? And, like, you have these crazy targeting marketers where they just keep getting this kid on here longer and longer in the scrolling, you know, and they build a profile around him. And then, you know, like the end of the movie, he finds out. It's just like, oh, I got to unplug and do my own thing. Um but that's actually kind of really hard because, you know, what's kind of weird about social media, right? It's just like, you are social, even if you're just a viewer. Yeah. You know? There's a, there's a lot more social. You're participating. There's a lot more you're social. Participating. Media. There's a lot more social in social media than people realize. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. And one of the interesting factoids about social media is the number of people who are on it. I want to see if you can see if you can guess the total number of social media users in the world. Dude, it's got to be like a billion. It's 3.78 billion social media users as of May 2021. Dude, that's actually not too bad. I got a billion. Yeah, uh, yeah. 2.32 billion Facebook users. Yeah, and that's almost that's almost half the world. Yeah, it's almost half the world, which is crazy. Which means it's like, hey, what the other half of the world doing? Oh, that's right, doing something that's not social media, <laughs> which can be yeah. very good. Um, the interesting factoid is 84% of the uh, social media users mm -hmm. are between the ages of 18 and 29. Oh, wow. Which you'd say, oh, that sounds like, you know, that's a pretty good. But just below that, 81% is between 30 and 49 years old. So you still got that older than 30 who are still around using social media. 70% at 1564, with 65 and older being pretty much not on social media at all. Um, and get this, two hours and 25 minutes of social media use on average. Per day? Per day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> per day. That's a That's... lot. That's. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I have... Um, I don't, I don't see, I, I don't think of myself as using two hours 
But then again, I have to realize that they're in, taking into account of all social media stuff, which is YouTube and TikTok and Instagram Reels and all that kind of stuff. So um, I would say I would probably spend it maybe an hour a day on social media, but that's an hour over the span of 24. So, um, but yeah, that's a lot. Two hours. That's seven minutes. hours a week. Yeah, seven hours a week you're spending on Minimum. social media. And guess what? Seven hour. Uh, well, actually, it's it's an hour a week that we're spending on this. So it's like, oh, you could take that seven and knock it down to six hours social media. Tune into this podcast. <laughs> oh, dude, this is this is this is work. This is work. This, <laughs> this is work. Man, this ain't in social media. <laughs> and uh, just an illusion. I'm just kidding. This is a fact that blew my mind. If someone signed up at sixty, at sixteen, on social mm-hmm. media, and lived to seventy. They'd spend 5.7 years of their life on social media. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what? And then, Which means I actually signed up when I was 15. So that means uh, 5.75, I would say, if I lived till 70 and still maintained all my social media accounts. Oh That's insane. God. That's... That's crazy. I I, 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 do, I didn't believe it when I first looked it up, and then I, as I did my research through studies, I found that it was like the same number. It was somewhere between like 5.7, 5.5, 5.6, but it still was like the number of five years you're spending social media. And we're supposed to spend a third of our life sleeping. So I don't know if we have to give up social media or give up five hours of sleep um, for the rest of our life. But Dude, I, I'm going to choose sleep, man. Yeah, I'm going to choose oh sleep as well. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. You turn it off, log off. Have a healthy relationship with that. If you had to pick uh, one social media to use for – this is the only social media account you can use for the rest of your life. Which one do you think you would pick? Vimeo. Vimeo? Uh, and that's not even like I would consider a, a social media platform. That's mm-hmm. just a video platform um, of uploading videos, but mm-hmm. Vimeo. Um, and to be honest, there's also a lot of successful people. We cannot regard that in that they don't have social media accounts, but they are very well known throughout the community. Yes. Yes. You know, um, you can't take away, you know, like, you know, an actual solid good word and it's not just some Yelp review. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to see like people who don't have social media but are still well known. Um, there are, I'm a huge baseball fan, as mm-hmm. as you know, um, and there are so many baseball players that don't have accounts, but are totally huge in the community because of who they are, um, and regardless of their impact on the on and off the field, they're huge influences because people love them. Um, people like Warren Buffett, I don't think he has social media. Um, oh, I don't think so. Somebody like. I know Elon Musk has social media because... Oh, yeah, da- dude. Dogecoin to the moon. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny that you bring that up because cause, um, I, I was I, I was reading this interesting article. Um, it was about Elon Musk's uh, appearance on Saturday Night Live and how oh, he yeah? made the quip that Dogecoin was kind of like a joke. As I'm watching the episode, I'm looking at the Dogecoin stock and I'm watching it live and it's just going... It's just going down, and I'm like, "No, <laughs> why'd you do that?" But it it kind of brings into perspective how big social media can have an impact outside of just social media um, on economy. Um, we've seen it with um, social, uh, <clears throat> social politics, yeah, politics, everything. Yeah, everything. I mean, with the whole Israel Palestine thing, which I'm not going to touch, but um, we saw that explode. Um, but the great thing about social media, one of the, one of the good things, is the exposure it gives to content creators, and the exposure it gives to information that people need to see and people need to hear and read. Um, I I think it it gives us a window to open that you know a different perspective, mm-hmm. but it it ultimately comes to us at the end of the day the user yes. if we want to engage in that yes. and i think you know a lot of us tend to put that pressure on the social media companies you know saying hey you gotta put this out there you gotta say this and say that but 
that's not necessarily their job. Right. You know, it's actually our job, you know, to do the research, to look up the information and, you know, take full responsibility for ourselves and come up with the solution. Um, we just, like I was saying earlier, you can't just be passive and it's just like, oh, I saw it on Facebook or I just saw it on the Twitter sphere, you know. You know, and just like, that seems pretty solid, you know. Oh, that there was a TikTok about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't solve anything. Yeah. What really actually works is actually putting that into action. So, like, for me, like, when I was working at Starbucks, you know, someone would mention, you know, like, something, you know, passively, you know. Um, I don't know, it would just be, like, something like, you know, like, I don't know, like, cars. Is there going to be an electric pickup? I don't know. I'm like, oh, yeah, actually, there is. And then actually explain to them what is going on. Yeah. You know, um, I think, you know, a lot of that is lost now um, because we actually don't want to retain actually a lot of information in our own daily lives. We want someone to provide that for us. Yeah. And I think that is kind of, it is kind of like relaxing. But also, it's kind of like, oh, man, <laughs> you know, it's like, ooh. Yeah, speak, it's just like speak. I could I could just Google it, you know, and not saying Google's bad. I think it's a very good, tremendous tool. But that's all that is. It is a tool. You know, you just can't use that as like a solution, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's very true. And yeah, it is up to the user to um, mm -hmm. for, for information. And it's such... I mean, it's so user the, – the big part of it is just the user in general and what we see. I mean there's – a lot of times I'll see something on Instagram Reels, a short video of, of something, and I'm like, I want to see more of this. Where can I find it? And all you have to do is a quick Google search to find more of it or to find, it, to find background on this. Uh, there was – you mentioned the Tesla pickup. Um, there was, yeah, the cyber yeah, truck. The cyber truck. There was a Elon Musk. Give me a free cyber truck, please. Right. There was. Those went to the moon. There was a video, a very short, very very short trailer about a Tesla pickup truck, and this was before the cyber truck got introduced. And I was like, Tesla's making a pickup truck. So I did some research on it, and no, it's not from Tesla. There is an engineer, a German engineer who now lives in America. She took her Tesla Model 3 and turned it into a truck. What? Yeah, so basically what she that did legit? was she took the back half off of it and just replaced it with a truck bed. And it's it works exactly like a Tesla. They made sure not to cut any of the wiring or stuff like that. So you look at it and goes, that looks like a Tesla. But it's not a it's not a Tesla truck at all. It's just a Tesla Model 3 that she modified into a Tesla pickup truck. And she gets a lot of intention over it because it's sick. The, the trailer she made for it was fantastic. And then I watched the, how they made it. And I was like, man, we need to see more of this. And then before you know it, a couple months later, Elon Musk goes, hey, Cybertruck, and then breaks the window. Um, but, yeah, it was – that Cybertruck is – I don't know. It, I have weird feelings on it. Like I love it, but it's also – I don't know. The design on it is so – Dude, it's filthy. It's so Elon Musk. That's like the best way I can describe it. It's so Elon Musk. Like, there are some people you can't explain in the world. You just have to go, it's it's Elon Musk. Like, when people ask me how Seattle, I go, it, it's Seattle. What? Oh, my God. Like, it, it's Seattle. Cause really? Because there's so much to, there's, there's so much you can tell about a person or a place or a thing or idea that at some point becomes so well well known that you just go it's it's this it, it's when you're trying to explain baseball to someone they're like it's baseball that's what happens or it's Elon Musk he's crazy and a genius and he's the best thing that's happened to society in the past twenty years and I it's I think he he he's actually helped you know um, but there we can't like. Just all give credit to him. There's a oh, lot of smart people out there, you know, working, yeah. you know, right now in trying to uh, make this happen. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you have um, Richard Branson, you know, or Bronson. 
uh, with uh, Virgin Galactic, mm -hmm. and then you have Jeff Bezos with Amazon, and then all these other incredible CEOs, you know, that are working very hard for a sustainable future, you know? Yeah. It, it takes a lot of work, you know? It's not just one person, you know? It's just like, we're all in this together, um, one way or another. It's just like, you know, just putting your nose to the grindstone and keep finding solutions to, you know, problems that we have in every single day. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily easy, but I think, you know, that's what we absolutely, like, kind of love about it now. Yeah. You know, just like we just got to do it. Yeah, there's um, something you said about, I, I, w I, w I wouldn't, I, I don't know if you could say Elon and Jeff Bezos are competitors. I guess they are with uh with the rocket stuff and i think that just makes the world a bit of a better pace um place when the competition gets public um you see two two companies trying to better the world but also trying to outdo each other i mean amazon is trying to do outdo um spacex and spacex is trying to outdo um amazon but they're both trying to do so in the name of making society a better place and that is just awesome there are so many videos on YouTube where it's like Jeff Bezos versus Elon Musk, and it just shows them being two incredibly smart individuals driving their company and driving society to a better future. And I think that goes unnoticed sometimes. Um, like what you're saying is just put your nose to the ground. Um, there's a lot of moments and a lot of people who go oh, a little unnoticed, and I think that's where social media comes in where they get their – they get their exposure but like we said earlier it's also the user because if the user isn't interested in whatever is being shared on social media it might not explode um, and if the user is very interested they're going to share it with their friends they're going to like they're going to want to see more of this and then you found a niche um, talking with my manager earlier today we were talking about Sudoku there's uh, mm -hmm. some British accountants who ran a um, who ran a channel on YouTube for many, many years. Um, they put out like maybe one video a week, maybe two videos a week. And what happened is over the pandemic, they found out that a lot of people were interested in Sudoku. And they were uploading one video a week, and then two videos a week, and then it was seven, and then it was 14 a week. And then now they're so big, they don't have, a, they don't have their accounting jobs anymore. They do the Sudoku YouTube channel full time because people love it. And your niche can become your career if you work hard at it, if you put in the hours, you put in the time, yeah, it'll, it'll take off on its own. You can only do so much, and it is up to the user. But you put your work in, and people are going to be impressed. Yeah, like, for me, like, I never really think about that. Mm -hmm. And this is this is uh, me. Um, I don't really think about, like, I just do the work. Yeah, do the work. Um, and just do the work, you know, um... The biggest uh, advice that I got, you know, this was when I was uh, graduating college and it came from a guy named Von Raymond. And what he had said is just like, view everything as a block of birds, you know. And if you ever stared at a flock of birds, you know, it's just like, it's just one big clump mm -hmm. of birds just flying around in circles around each other, right? And then when one bird decides to go a different direction, the rest of the birds follow hmm. and and then you know and just goes like in this nice beautiful continuous wave hmm. and for me you know what i took away from that is just like you know what it's just like we're all those birds right now right we're all flying in this you know flock right and if you decide to go a different direction know that there's people that are always going to follow you, you're the one that has to keep flying in that direction. Mm. Um, so, and like, I, as we keep saying in this conversation, it just comes back ultimately to the user. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a, that's a good point. It's, um, mm -hmm. and I, I think it, it may be just me, but, um, social media is a, it is the wave of the future, but I also feel that it's it can be a detriment at some points, um, and I think we got to be really careful. Um, there's because a lot of people can do things on social nowadays. It's it's a lot easier to do things on social media than it was ten years ago. What with editing a lot of stuff, um, one 
thing that did actually happen a, about a week and a half ago. Uh, my manager saw a picture on social media and was pretty much convinced that it was real. And basically what it was, it was, um, it was a newscast. There's two newscast feeds, and someone had green screen edited a, a new anchor or a new, pers- new reporter in. With a huh. with a fake um, with a fake tagline, it was like um, I think it was some, it was back during the protests. They took they took a um, took something from CNN off the protests and put it on another photo, and she was completely convinced it was real. And I said, actually, that's not a real photo. These are the two separate images, and someone just merged them apart. And it wasn't until I did it myself, I'll admit rather badly, but she ended up getting the point. That anybody can take something off the internet, edit it, and put it right back up, and that's happened to me before. And I've been very, very careful about not letting it happen again. Um, and it's it's easy for 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 edited stuff to completely just jump out of people's minds. Um, documents can be edited, photos, audio, video. Um, you know, we've seen it. I mean, if you make your video five five seconds long, but the actual thing happened over a period of an hour and a half. People only see those five seconds, and it's it's up to the user to 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 be um, to be forward with that. And it's a detriment, but also it allows for creativity. You know, you take down a vi- you take a video from someone else and edit yourself in, and boom, you can say, "Hey guys, look at this! I'm in a video with Warren Buffett." And just oh post it up God. on social media, and boom, everyone thinks you're with Warren Buffett until you know you go, "Ha it's just a joke," and that's where the that's where the fun pokes in. Oh I, my I made a video with Warren Buffett. Did you really? Yeah, he was awesome, man. Flew me out to Chicago and everything, or wherever you Warren Buffett lives. Uh, I think he's New York. Um, but you know, that's the fun side. Is this hey, little poking fun at somebody, uh, or looping things. Um, with Elon Musk on Joe Rogan smoking the joint. That was hilarious. The, the loops on that were hilarious. That was great. That was awesome. That was an awesome moment. Yeah, I never saw any of that. I just saw the one picture of him. And he looks baked. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny because he took one hit, and it was that was the face he made because he was like, whoa, this is – because it, was, it wasn't just marijuana. It was marijuana and tobacco. Oh. So it's, it was a different mix. So it was spliff. Yeah, it was spliff, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was so – Ah, that was so awesome. That was such an awesome moment. Everyone freaked out all over the place, and everyone laughed all over the place. It was just great. It was one of those wholesome moments, you see. Um, yeah, you can't really script those. No, you really can't. <laughs> if you could pick at least, uh, what well, what would be? What's your earliest memory of uh, of YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. Oh man. It- I remember in my fifth grade class, we had some downtime, right? And we were just looking up random stuff. You know, my buddies were, like I wasn't. Um, And what they had typed in was, whale landing on kayak. (laughs) And sure enough, there was this orca, came right out of the water and landed on this dude's kayak. No, what the heck? Real video. I gotta look this up. This I gotta look this up. Whale. That, that's like my earliest like <laughs> it's, memory. You, you type in whale L A and it says whale lands on kayak is the first one that comes up. Whale landing <laughs> on kayak, dude. It's legit. I gotta see this. Orca well, whale. You gotta get like an old one. You can't get like a new one. Orca whale lands on kayak. This came out 12 years ago. Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> they've got like the they've got the oh this was done a windows uh movie maker yeah dude I, I i guess that's like the same font and everything i use whoa <laughs> he got demolished oh that's yeah. sick that's yeah. sick and then he no, disappeared. Oh, dude, that guy got crushed by a whale that dis- he disappeared for like five seconds in the water You're like where'd he go and then whoop pops up that's hilarious i think um what was it llamas and hats i think was my first first introduction to uh to um to youtube llamas and hats and there was charlie bit my finger was the other one which sadly by the way is taken off of youtube 
Really? It got. So, oh, what's that new? Um, it's that new. Uh, currency. NFT. Yeah, NFT. It got. It got uh, sold as an NFT, so now it can't be played anymore. Oh whoa! And that Crazy. was like one of the most viewed videos on YouTube of all time, before Baby Shark passed it. Baby Shark, dude. Baby, Baby Shark passed it because I think dude, Elon dude, dude, Musk dude. tweeted it out and it went viral. Like it was dude. already went viral, but that's the other dude, thing that can shark, happen. Dude, 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 yeah. Dude. Baby shark, shark doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> um, that's the other thing that can happen with social media. Celebrities can call out things and they just go viral. Um, obviously, you just said Dogecoin, so that went, that went pretty viral back in January. Thanks to Elon Musk for the free $500. But um, uh, <laughs> here's the, there's the Dogecoin. There's the baby shark. There's probably a number of different things that happened over the years. That just oh, got swallowed up. absolutely. Um. And then with celebrities calling it out, and it just goes viral. And that's the well, impact. Also, as well, too, virality has changed over the years as yes. well, too. It is not the same as it was 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. It's... I, don't, I don't think... I don't consider something... This is just my own personal opinion. Just because it has a lot of views doesn't necessarily mean it's viral for me makes sense because what i associate virality is a human aspect to it and just like this has some sort of value mm. okay i see where you're coming from so like let's take you know let's go back really way back in youtube day let's go with okay goes here it goes again guys dancing on treadmills whoa original you know, one that of the old one I school. I seen in a while. Virality. Um, you know? Okay, go. Sponsor this video, please. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember these. And this is like something where it's just like you had to show someone. It's just like, this is just so cool. You know? And it's substance in the sense of just like, oh, there's music to it. And then, like, as things got older, you know. It's just like, you know, like we start seeing, you know, more and more, you know, kind of, you know, stuff, you know, we're like here, there, we all have our own personal viral moments. And then, you know, back in 2000, what is it, 12, when Gangnam Style came out, boom, broke it again. Um, really broke it in the sense of it took everything that we were already doing, but now it was on a foreign platform. Hmm. Because that wasn't like a U.S. thing. That was from another side of the world. Mm. Boom. Blows up. You know, and then everybody's doing that dance. You know? You know, hey, sexy lady. Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Yeah, I remember that Sick. one came out. Yeah. That was, that was not allowed in our household for a long time. Dude, still fresh. And then, let's keep fast tracked forward keep going forward and then you know you have like you know casey neistat you know you know changing the game of like not with the with the vlog but like you know skiing through new york no one has ever seen that before it's just him in the back of a jeep you know with his buddy just skiing right around new york city another natural wholesome moment yeah you know and also provided you know a sense of joy you know um and, like, for me, that's what I consider, you know, viral video. It's not necessarily something that gets a lot of like or it gets, like, a lot of buzz. It's just, like, you know, there are nice, cute human moments that some of us have expected and some of us haven't expected. Mm. And then also as well, too, we can't forget, like, just because it's viral in one market doesn't necessarily mean it's viral in another. Yeah. Yeah. Because especially nowadays with um, YouTube being... YouTube and I would say Vimeo goes along with this well of you really don't have a time limit per se on a video. It can be as long as as short as you want, and I, maybe Twitter as well. But I know with Instagram the story of Snapchat stories and the reels and TikTok there is a there is a time limit, and that's where you get super creative, um, and that's where I feel like people go, wow, that's I want to learn how to do that. 
um, there's a girl who does transition videos. Uh, she puts a heavy, a heavy beat music over um, her transitioning into different clothes. Like it's like hoodies and like in one transition, she takes her head and kind of takes it, and it, it almost looks like she's taking her head off and putting it on another body. But it's just oh, a transition cool. effect, and like it's like stuff like that. You go and you go, oh boy, that's that's creative and the virality of a lot of stuff on tiktok has gone on i think what was it um the tiktok pasta i think that's something that has gone a little viral i don't know if you've heard of that if you haven't there goes my point about virality um but it's basically just pasta with a bar of mozzarella cheese and tomatoes <laughs> that's it um but yeah it, it definitely definitely um definitely stuff like casey nash that did with the with the with the thing in new york I think again, like you were saying, it people were ready. People were like working for it, but I don't think they were ready for it. And when that happened, I think it was that was a big moment. Um, I think I'm trying to remember of there was one that came out around that time, around that time frame of the Casey Neistat thing. And I can't remember what it was. It might have been him again, but there was one about someone doing um, an Aladdin in New York City, like a floating car. Yeah, that was that was um, Casey Neistat. But I would say that one's different, though. Yes, it is. Very I would. Different. I wouldn't. I would not say those two are the same. Right. It was... You know, be because there's two different approaches. New York, it was just like, dude, let we got to do this. This is like a one-time, like once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, compared to the Latin, where it's just like, I feel like you could do that at any time. At any time, yeah. Also, I feel you know? like the magic was stolen away with the snowboarding thing. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say the magic was stolen away. I would say that I think people were a lot more prepared for it because they're like, "All right, what's he gonna do next?" And I think this Aladdin thing, like you said, you can do it anywhere. But with that amount of snow, especially in New York City, and with the whole premise of like YouTube really becoming big and Casey Nice nice at that point getting bigger than ever before, it definitely added into that virality of. I think. That was his kind of turning point, I would say. When did that video come out? 2013? Let me see. Um, oh, not even. That, that, that was later. Like 2016, maybe. 2016? Yeah, 2016. Did came out in 2016, yeah. Snowboarding Nailed with it. the NYPD. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> a pretty good memory. Um, yeah, that, yeah, definitely with the, with the virality. I think Casey Neistat, I'm very sad that he's not uploading as much as he is, but when he does, it's, it's, it's magical. Um, Casey Nastat got me into um, a lot of the vlogging stuff, but I think the one person that really got me into the whole vlogs was Roman Atwood, which unfortunately he's fallen off of grace for me. Um, just he's very clickbaity now, but it's kind of interesting. I got a buddy. His name is Noah Wilson, um, and he, like you, is a filmmaker, uh, makes short films is an unbelievable photographer and if you look at uh we both did vlogs at the same time for 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 a while if you look at my vlogs you look at his vlogs and you look at roman atwood vlogs and you look at casey neistat vlogs my editing style was very close to roman atwood's whereas his was very close to casey neistat's so the impact that vlogger vloggers on youtube had um and the impact that those kind of people had on people like me and my friend noah uh, is mind-blowing um, I don't know. I don't know if you got. Did you have somebody that you really looked up towards as like that's somebody that I would like to aspire to, or someone that maybe gave you a um, gave you something that you were like, this is this is really really cool, and I want to try and cut into that, but add my own flow. Um, I never really try to copy anyone's styles. Mm -hmm. Um, I shoot around like like for me like. <sighs> how i found my voice you know is just like i just listen mm. and then i just create about around that because like if i'm if i'm creating my own personal concepts then i know i'm talking yeah but if i'm doing something else like for other people then it's my job to listen yeah so that's where i got and and just like and it's just like technique anyone can learn technique but like learning style that 
you know, and like flow and all that, that's definitely all on you. Yeah. Um, and that just comes with experience, mm -hmm. you know, so there's just two different approaches you can go to it. And like for me, I always just figure what type of piece am I doing, you know, in that moment. So it's just like, oh, this is for me. And then I'm like, sweet, sick. And then I start like digesting and just like actually looking at like, what am I really seeing here? And then I start creating from there. I don't really go in like, oh, I want to try to recreate, you know, George Lucas style or a Casey Neistat style. Mm. Like, I, excuse me, in my younger years, I did do that. Yes. Um, just because it's just like, why does this work? That's the question that I was trying to figure out. And then when I found out, oh, this is why, you know, this works for this person, it's because X, X, and X, mm. you know? And, like, for me, it's just, like, that doesn't work for me because of X, X, and X. And then it, it's just more of, like, copying someone else's style is more just the basis of get, getting you to understand what you like and that have you actually in the process of doing mm. because you can't like become who you want to be overnight by doing nothing mm. you got to do something would you say that it's it i, I feel like because i was listening to what you're saying i feel like mm -hmm. it's more like they're you've watched so many people do something that you figured out okay this is what i'm gonna do and this is how I'm going to do it. And, oh, pluck a little here, pluck a little there, pluck a little there. Oh, there's something that I just figured out. Oh, that's something that I just figured out. And then it just, like we were saying last week with the, with the someone figures something out and it explodes into, it's like the breaking point where you start, oh, yeah. you start figuring something out. And it's like, oh, I just discovered a whole new world. And it's not one moment, but I feel that it's something over the years that you learn, especially if you're really engaged with the the um, the hobby that you're into. No, it's just everything. Yeah. It's just one continuous moment. It's just acting on everything, mm -hmm. you know, like even from like the simple sentence. I'm thinking about every single word that I'm trying to use right now to <laughs> convey my point. <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it really starts boiling down to that. And just a continuous action of doing it you know like at first you know we're shy we all know what we're doing and then it's just like oh this is a reference point then you'll suggest like oh you're trying to do this maybe you should look at film riot or casey neistat or corridor digital or you know you know red jet films like look at all these different people and then you start building like oh i go over here for this i go over here for that you know, and you just educate yourself, and then, like sooner or later, you found you find yourself like, oh, I'm a I actually know this, mm. and then it's just like it just becomes like a second language to you, and you just do it, and you do it with like not like, it's like, like tying your shoe. It's just like at first you really had to think about the loops and tying it, you know, and then all of a sudden it's just like you just do it like oh no brainer, you know. You're roasting a friend while tying your shoe, or you know you're tying someone else's shoe. You know, like, yeah. like it, it, it. That's what like I can like think about. You know. Yeah, it's it is amazing to see um, how far people have come from their early works, and um, it's it's awesome to see what they've learned too, because you sit down with them when they first began, and they're talking about everyone else. Um, and when you sit down with them seven years later and say, and, and they're talking about, man, this is so cool. This is I, the things that ha I've been able to find and create, and, and I've been able to tell other people, and we've created so many things, and we have boosted our knowledge on things and passed on the knowledge, and we've ha made so many memories on this stuff. It's really cool to, to look back at the past seven years and see a lot of memories that you look back on you know, that those are building moments and they're not the moments that um maybe people would think of i think with social media how it is people might look back and oh you you met someone and they mentored you and they took you under the wing a lot of it is independent research and independent findings and it's it's about your drive i mean if you really want to succeed at something if you really really want to be good at something 
you're going to research and work hard and and figure out the niches that you can and it's not about how much money you can make it's not about how many followers you have and it's definitely not about how many views but it's about how did this make you you H how did did you let this um, make you you or did you just allow it to happen and it just happened and you had fun make doing it you had fun making memories and you can't wait for the next seven years because those are going to be great it's oh. Yeah, you just got to keep trucking away at it. It doesn't get any easier. Um, that's all I can really say. Yeah. yeah it's, no? it, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun, and, and you know, there's, there's so many things to look back on. And I, I, I honestly can't wait for the next seven years. It's going um, it's, it's to be awesome, really. Uh, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it at a, at a futuristic standpoint. It's going to be really cool. And it's not always going to be easy, and it's not always going to be the, the, the best thing to do. Um, but that you may think it's not the best thing to do, but if you continually better yourself with your hobbies and you allow your hobbies to be the break, to be that creative standpoint, you're going to have so much fun and you're going to get home from work and you go, oh, I get to edit a video. When I get home from work, I get to go, man, I get to go and get a Horseman podcast debut episode and start clipping and writing and making graphics. And when you find your niche, you find the fun part you start to really take pride in the work that you have and it shows um, I think definitely with um, with Elon Musk I know we keep bringing him up and <laughs> I'm crazy about Elon Musk I'm crazy about him um, yeah 2008 didn't get off to a hot start electric car company that'll never happen and look where he is now and it's just because he said I'm gonna set out and do something and I'm gonna change the world and he decided that instead of going out to make people like his company, he set out to create a company, do the best job he can, and let the chips fall where they may. Oh, I can't speak for him myself. That's just what I've seen from my research. <laughs> um, but social media is, uh, in general, I would say, like everything, has its positive and its negatives. And I think as soci society in general... We should keep striving to um, to be better. Um, keep striving to be creative. Keep striving to be um, the best we can. And it's so much fun to see where other people have led, and it's it's awesome to see what what we can take away from all this. Um, it's the future. The future's coming. And the I future is now. The future is now. The future is now. The future is coming. Well. Technically, tomorrow is coming, but it's always coming, so you might as well make today count. So uh, that's one of my favorite settings. Tomorrow's always going to be there, so make today count. Um, but uh, I uh, I expect a lot of big things coming um, to coming with social media. I think there's going to be a a lot of change coming, and I can't wait to see what happens with the uh, with the creative aspect and the content creators we're seeing. Yeah, seeing there's thousands a lot every day. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, creative stuff that's happening right now. I know, like, right now, in tw uh, like, in the Twitterville, you know, they're, Twitter's uh, testing out a paid subscription app. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know if you heard about that. Um, it's called, um, I believe it's called Bluebird. Bluebird or uh, Blue, something blue. And Twitter blue. you just pay, what? Twitter blue. Twitter blue, yeah. And... Like right now, it's like a fancy way of bookmarking stuff, but like it's going, it could possibly be the first way of, you know, paid, you know, subscription to social media apps. You see Bumble, they're switching over, you know, their main target from dating to creating friendships. You know, we're seeing a lot of branding, you know, we're seeing a lot like within Snapchat as well, too. They're fo focusing so much on augmented reality that they could be changing retail spaces because if in that app now, you can be able to try on something and order something, you know, from the Nike store. Super sick, you know? There's a lot of great things that social media is doing right now in this moment. And there's a lot of things that we don't know, you know? Like, right now, you know, with Congress, you know, everybody being against Mark Zuckerberg for an Instagram for younger kids, even though kids right now, like under 13, are on that platform, you know? 
and he's trying to make it a safer space you know it is a very complicated thing and there is no one single answer but what i really enjoy and like is that we're all here and we're trying to find solutions for these platforms mm -hmm. and they keep evolving as we evolve it along with it as well too because you know technology is only good as its user so with that being said you know it's just like ultimately it's all on us and again, back to the user. It's it's all mm -hmm. back to the user. And what I was seeing, I, I did a quick Google on uh, on Twitter Blue, and uh, I was seeing some of the things they were doing, and I was like, you know, there's some of the things that you know really people have been have been talking about for a long time that they really want Twitter to do it. Um, and we the show 21 came out a couple months ago, and for about six years or so, us and the MLB the show community have been asking to create a ballpark. We've been asking for create a stadium mode for years. And finally, they were able to do it because of the next-gen consoles. But yeah, it's, it's really about the community and, and what the community begs for. And honestly, if the community really wants it, I would say that they're, they're probably going to get it at some point. It, it, if it's high-tech, it might take a little while for people to figure it out, um, especially with coding and everything like that. Um, but the community base is what drives social media to a better place. Um, I was just looking at it, and I was just looking at the Twitter blue, and it said uh, bookmarks. You mentioned bookmarks, and uh, th there's an undo button. You mm -hmm. can like undo a tweet if you got to tag someone, or like there was an auto, uh, there was like auto correct fail or something like that. That's fantastic. People have been asking for that for years. Um, and, that, and then also as well too, let's bring this back over to Instagram, right? Yeah. They test it out, you know. Now there's going to be an option, you know, for the bigger creators, they can take out the like button. You know, it's just like they're already well known across the board. But for our younger creators where they need that like button to show over to, you know, companies that, hey, I do get the content, you know, it's just like we're going to see a lot new relationship with these buttons that we have all come accustomed to and grown up with. Yeah. And seeing how people use them in their daily lives moving forward is going to be very interesting. And I couldn't be any more excited. It is the wave of the future and the future is now the future is now um but that's it that's it that's a good way into um kind of wrapping this up a little bit um and with social media my one advice for anybody who listens to this is take it slow you don't have to rush in and and do all the big stuff because that that'll that'll come just have fun doing it and just make sure that you be you you be who you want to be. This is this is the internet, and you can be who you ever ever you want to be. And if somebody doesn't like it, well, there's a million other accounts that they can just follow. Um, and it's not it's not always about the money that you're bringing in, because for at least for me, I, I don't look at it that way. I just want to put out my best work, um, and I want to be proud of the stuff that I create. Um, so. If I make money off of something, yeah, fantastic, great, but that's what a job's for. Um, and my goal with this podcast is to be as creative as I can. And that's why, I mean, anybody watching the stream or and, and some people watching the podcast when it comes out um, is going to notice a little bit of a graphic change. And, and that's because I discovered something that was I felt was really cool and, and that I liked. Um, and there are so many creative things that you can do as um, as a platform and as a creator and as a person in general. Don't forget that even as a creator, you are still a person and you still fully matter. Um, and n n don't ever uh, don't ever uh, um, take let somebody take that take that away from you. Um, you got any uh, ending thoughts, Greg? Um, yeah, it's basically all I have to say, it's always on you. Um, you know, like whether you participate in or not, um, like you could be part of the solution or you could be part of the problem. Um, it could always go either way. Um, but remember at the end of the day, it's always on you, uh, what, no matter what you do. Uh, so with that being said, it's all about the user and take care of the user, take care of your tools, and I think you'll do just fine. 
And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the Horseman Podcast, episode number two, the social media aspect. Greg and I, uh, we've, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, and we all wish you a lovely and uh, positive good night. Thank you guys for tuning in.